for them make a decision in relation to the, uh, the outcome what we choose to do. But to be clear, there is no status quo option. It will either be a merger or an outright closure of one of the stations involved for the reasons I stated earlier, because we've already run out of the people. We do not have the money to employ them. There is no status quo option. We need to make that clear to people. In terms of Knowsley, that consultation process has been undertaken already, and the authority on the 2nd of October have approved that merger, which is the closure of Hyde, closure of Western New Station at Prescott in uh, Manchester Road, for those of you who know that, uh, that area of South Knowsley. The authority has bid for capital funding to contribute towards the cost of the new build of the stations and my understanding is that the decision on the capital bid will be announced tomorrow. Any balance in terms of the expenditure would be met from the reserves and whatever capital receipts we were able to realise from the sale of the two stations, the two existing stations, which will be closed to facilitate the build of the new station. In terms of the build process, if you take Nosley as an example, the authority approved the merger on the 2nd of October. We are not likely to conclude the planning process and to be in a position to appoint a contractor to start to build till probably February, March 2015. Which means that the operational station will not be built till around March 2016. So you'll appreciate we are already some way behind the curve here. It's in a scheme, there's nothing you can do, it just takes time to do these things. So in the meanwhile, I will use delegated operational authority as to which of the appliances remain crude over that interim period, simply because, and I make the point again, we've already run out of people, because we cannot afford to recruit more because our budget is going to be reduced again and we've got to make fair assessments. More closures are likely based on the financial predictions, and again to make the point, irrespective of who forms the next government, all of the mainstream political parties are, are, are committed to eradicate the structural deficit. That means for the non-protected areas of the public sector, i.e. local government of which we are part of, and the police, there will be further significant efficiencies to be delivered. The inevitable outcome is therefore there will be further closures in Liverpool, Wirral, which will be Wallasey to be clear now, that is the next station that we would have to close and then in Sefton, which would be Crosby, based on the, uh, the, the location, the existing geographic location of the stations that we, uh, that we have on the map. In terms of the Greater Air the Greasby merger option, In terms of the Greensby merger option, the proposal would be, as I said previously, currently have two whole time fire appliances, one at Upton, one at West Kirby. In the event the merger at Greensby went ahead, we would have two fire engines, one of which would be crude whole time, the other would be crude whole time retained. So, whole time firefighters on the days off providing retained availability. That would be available on a 30 minute recall. It would not be used for the first response in the first instance. It would be used as a strategic reserve. So the, main, the attendance to West Riddle would be maintained, would be made from Greasby and or Birkenhead, Heswell or Wallace, or probably potentially depending on who was the nearest. But bear in mind, we operate dynamic mobilising. Greasby would be a key station, therefore it would always be called. Have the training facilities on site to be clear, this is a fire station we are proposing, first and foremost. An, oper uh, an operational fire station, the same facility is by and large than that which is there at the existing stations now. So a training yard and a tower, to be clear, that's what it means, the sort of, the sort of training facilities that we're, we are talking about. The proposal is that in conjunction with Will, we would integrate the existing library and children's centre 
within that facility. All of our fire stations are fairly significant, or certainly all of the new fire stations have fairly significant community facilities. A good example of that is the Birkenhead Head at the new PFI station. There is the possibility to include the existing Greensby Centre, which is there, which is adjacent to the, uh, the library and the children's centre. We have two possible designs, one that includes the Greensby Centre and one that does not. So that is a possibility that we would explore in conjunction with the community centre. The new station, if it were to go ahead, it is very unlikely it would include EDWAS and the police. We have included EDWAS on a number of our stations, so in North West Ambulance Service, yet yeah, apologies. If there are any acronyms, if Jeff doesn't get to me first, please, uh, please give me the lunch. Or on SSI police, unlikely this would just be a sta uh, standalone fire station in partnership with the colleagues from Will. The station would be designed to fit sympathetically with the area. Give an example of that on the recent uh, the PFI programme that we delivered in conjunction with colleagues from Lancashire and Cumbria. One of the fire stations in the lakes, which, which name escapes me, but Colin at the back would be able to remind me, Colin. Hatton Dale, that was designed to very much fit in keeping with the, uh, so it didn't look like anything like the other fire stations, it looked very much the same as the buildings that were in the, uh, that were in the area in Hatton Dale. Uh, any incident facilities, so any facilities that are there now would be maintained during any build process. We've done that with the, we've, we've built 10 new fire stations in the, uh, the last four years now, so that's what we managed to do that on, uh, on every single build project. That is the location of the site. For those of you who don't know the, uh, the Greensby area, you can see there where the, uh, the library is, which is adjacent to the, uh, I'm going to say the Red Cat rather than the Sainsbury's because I've, I've made myself popular and not as it is in Greensby, clearly the Greensby's could be made up there. I'm, uh, I'm not looking to get uh, I'm looking to make myself too marked in, in that sense. So it's next to the bed cam, that probably doesn't help me either. It's next to the health centre. <laughs> I, I didn't want to say that. Okay, the Greensby option then it would, de would deliver significant savings, would save just under 900,000 on the operating costs. That is, a, that is an annually occurring cost, like we are reducing the number of firefighters by 22. Currently, we have 24 at each station now. We would achieve that through natural waste and giant retirements, predicted retirement rates. We avoid compulsory redundancies through the use of reserves. We would sell the site to West Kirby and Upton. We open the phone. Possible grant, uh, contribution from the Department for Communities and Local Government, which is our lead government department. We say we'll know about that tomorrow. Any balance would be better from the reserves because what we're not going to do is increase our debt profile, clearly. The alternative to the Greensby merger would be the outright closure of West Kirby. Upton is the key station. We have two key stations on the wheel, one is Upton, one is Bromley. Very simply, if you draw the 10 minute isochrome run around the two stations, you cover all of the wheel, which means if you have a fire engine on either of those or both of those areas, you can get anywhere in that area within 10 minutes. Very simplistic, but it is effective and it assists our mobilising officers in ensuring that we are able to, uh, to maintain what is a, a, a very fast response time in terms of the uh, relative to the rest of the country. I'll cover that on the second to last slide. The West Kirby appliance, as I said, will be crew all time retained. On occasion now, the West Kirby pump is not available due to insufficient staffing. What I would do in the event, whatever happens here, as soon as the authority makes the decision, whether it's the merger or an outright closure, I will seek to then crew that appliance at West Kirby, whole time retained, simply to maintain its permanent availability rather than now, when on occasion, the appliance is not available for the shift at the time. A couple of some incident stats there. I'm not, I'm not going to dwell on these because I'm conscious of the, the time. There's been significant reductions 
given since over the last decade. That hasn't happened by accident, that's happened because of the, the very extensive proactive intervention campaign that the authority has led on. Some fairly groundbreaking uh, work were done there, which is well renowned. Like I said, that doesn't happen by accident. Some of the support service savings we're having to make includes people that do that sort of work. It isn't just firefighters that deliver that sort of work. Okay, so we, there, are, there are potential issues for us around the preventative work that we, uh, that we do. In terms of any, uh, what we still do, what we always continue to do, we will continue to do is, we know who the most vulnerable groups of people are, whether that be from fires or in truth from road traffic collisions or other emergencies of which we rescue far more people from than we ever do from fires. We know who those people are and we target them for intervention. In terms of degrees the option then, from a purely operational response perspective, the average response time across what would be the two combined areas would be 6 minutes 18 seconds. That is an average on 60% of occasions would get there quicker, on 40% of times it would take us longer. That is based on the most recent incident data that we have, 2013-14. All of the figures are based against last year's performance, it is an apples with apples comparison. The average response time now on West Kirby is 5 minutes 24, that's on the West Kirby station area now. The average response time on the Upton station area is 4 minutes and 34 seconds. Said previously, our, our target response time across Merseyside, the, the absolute maximum response time is 10 minutes. The reality is, we always get to instance much, much quicker than that, unless they are at the far extremes of the county, places like Billinge over in St. Helens, Cronton in Nosley, Hightown in Sefton. We will never get there in, in, uh, in five minutes unless we happen to have a fire engine in that area at the time that the call comes in. That is just the reality. But for the majority of the county, it's those sort of times. The national average figure, so the national response to dwelling fires, and that's the, the DCLG figures, our figures are to all life risk incidents. The, the 7 minutes 24, that is just the dwelling fires. So our target is a much more stringent target. National average for last year is 7 minutes 24. So as you can see, we are still significantly quicker, even with the merger, than we would be compared to the national response times. If we were to show West Kirby and right, the response into the West Kirby station area from Upton would be 8 minutes and 43 seconds. Still within the 10 minute response standard, but about 2.5 minutes quicker, that the longer rather than if we did the merger. The question that we are asking on the consultation is simply this. Given that the status quo is not an option, is that reasonable? Right, let me tell you from an operational response perspective, self-evidently it is. I already know the answer to that question because I wouldn't have recommended it if it wasn't. I need to make that point. I recognise that dependent on where you are, if you're in West Kirby, you will have a different view than if you're in Greasby or if you're in Upton. I understand that and I fully recognise that different stakeholders will have a different view. This is solely about operational response and the reasonableness of the position based on the alternatives. It is not about planning, that is a completely separate issue and will be dealt with under planning processes. I realise that possibly doesn't make it popular in some quarters, it doesn't make it any less true. This is about operational response and the authority's statutory duties.
um, um, all of us appreciate the work that you and your colleagues do. Um, and on top of that fantastic work that you do, I also know, um, I can speak from experience of the work that the fire authority do, your service does in terms of community partnerships and so on, some of the, the work you do on that, I think you would be on everybody's, top of everybody's list in terms of a partner, in terms of uh, developing um, co-creative services. So thank you for that. What I wanted to do, conscious that we've got five or 10 minutes worth of questions to throw it open to the um, committee, and then if we've got time, even maybe one or two questions from the audience. So, has anyone got anything from the committee? Yes, Stuart. Thank, thanks, Chair. Um, th there's the points, and then uh, the other questions. No, basically, I don't accept that the third cuts to the fire service will look at points as inevitable for the public protection, because I'm sure, even though Question correctly, so the, the, you're referring to the um, work comments I made previously. If we cannot deliver the Greenspan merger, then we would develop up to that. That doesn't change. That is the position, and we would do that with our standing service. In terms of the, uh, the capital funding, the, the way in which the rules were constructed around the transformation and efficiencies fund, which is what the uh, that's, that's what it's. Um, that's what we are required to bid into. We were required to submit bids earlier on this year by June for a decision in October, which is tomorrow. So, and that is for 2015-16. So they were, the, they were the rules as set by DCLG. We had no, uh, there was no input, if you like, from the sector into that. So we had no other choice but to submit bids on the basis of what it, our, in, our assumptions were for the, uh, for the two set of balance budget. It, we may not get any funding at all. We may get some, but what is to say, the, the, the overall sum is five million pounds, that our 46 market rescue authorities and the, uh, the, the fund, the bids to the fund are over subscribed to the fund. So th there is no prospect we're going to get anything like as much as we've been uh, as, as as bid for. Well, Stuart, I'll come back to you. Stuart, I'll come back to you. John. Council have been talking to the fire authority, have not been talking to the local community, 
that's a particular thing. That's a lot of I can say, but it's quite a lot of challenge. I think there's two, two, two points there. There's the what's the world council's role in in this. Um, we don't know, but we'll find out and ask uh, um, to find out when those contacts first were made and if they were shared with us or uh, in terms of um, the relationship with the community and the work that goes on with the community. Uh, if I can ask Jan, Dan just to speak to that and comment on that other item in terms of the way you have normally engaged with community when these sort of things. Yeah, I, I mean, what I will say is I, I have already answered John's question, which he asked at the financial authority, so you already know what I'm going to answer now, John. And my answer will be the same answer as I gave you at the financial authority meeting. The, as soon as we were, uh, as, as soon as it was confirmed to us that the uh, that the library site was an option, we immediately at that point made uh, made contact with you. So we did that as soon as we possibly could. Uh, in truth, I don't believe we could have done anything more than that. So, uh, and again, that is the, the same answer that I gave at the Farm Rescue Authority meeting. In terms of the uh, engagement in the broader sense, as soon we've briefed elected members uh, and council uh, officers and MPs as to our intentions, we've sort of done that continually over the, uh, certainly over the course of the last few years. But I guess the reality is the, uh, the, the more often than not, it is out with our gift as a fire and rescue authority in terms of issues around land availability. We, we are more often than not hostages to fortune in terms of merger uh, proposals simply because we clearly don't own the sites that we are seeking to, uh, to secure in order to pursue a, a merger option. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Stuart, I promise I'll come back to you for a second. Do you have a quick follow-up? Sure. I'm used to this. Um, if the bid is successful tomorrow, uh, when does that mean the consultation? So was that if the bid successful or yeah. successful? Oh, successful. Exactly where it is now. It makes no it doesn't make the slightest bit of difference, but the, to refer you back to the answer I gave earlier, we are not going to get anything like the amount that we bid for. If we get anything and we don't go, we go for outright closures at the other locations, then the money we get from that bid will go towards the plastic manager. Okay, I, I think everyone's um, been able to ask the questions. I would ask, you know, I, I think my questions have been um, answered in terms of the future of West Kirby Fire Station, because clearly myself and colleagues have got lots of questions about that. Um, and we will be able to ask those questions further, and the community will be in those events. Again, on behalf of the committee, I'd like to thank you, Dan, for coming along, giving up your time to come to this event. I think it's been really useful, and I think it's helped to frame that, dis frame, frame that discussion. So that I know there will be those at the public meetings, and again, thanks for coming along. Thanks for framing